GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. So, Fat Man. Sleazy? As Wait, what the fuck? Gimmick, as you're stealing my gimmick. <laughs> what the fuck kind of shirt is that? I to- Dude, I'm an award winner. I'm a Smarky Award winner. You are a f- barely a Hall of Famer. Uh, excuse you? Yeah, because you were the only person who voted, and you voted for yourself. Congratulations. Hey, hey, hey. It still counts. Coco Beware is a Hall of Famer. I'm a Hall of Famer. Coco Beware and Donald fucking Trump. Oh, you fucking dick. Um, so I, I, I guess we're kicking it old school. You know, everyone yeah. was saying, what shows are we covering? What shows are we covering? And then when I say, I ask you right after the Royal Rumble, what time are we taping? You go eight. I go, sounds good. I was the only one to reply. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what happened? Is they heard how many shows we were going to cover tonight, and they went, nah, dude, not for me. Well, let's find out what we're actually covering on The Wrestling Show. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. This is Sleazy. It's the Fat Man. And welcome, everyone, to another wonderful episode of Blue Smock Nancy. They're awesome. They let us use that wonderful song on Settling Differences. You can find them on iTunes and Spotify. Fat Man, we've got a lot to cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Okay, so I, I let's preface this right now by saying... January was a decent month for wrestling in terms of quantity. We'll just put that like that. A show that had two nights at the beginning. Yep. The second biggest WWE show of the year at the end. Mm -hmm. And then Impact in the middle. It is the cream filling of the Oreo. If it were mint. <laughs> hey, I like mint. Shut up. Ah. Well, let's get ready. Coconut. Okay, there you go. Coconut. I'll, I'll, I'll go with coconut. Um, so let's, I know you want to start chronologically. So let's start with night two of Wrestle Kingdom. Uh. <laughs> night oh, one? Night, night one. Did you watch the pre show? No. I, I did. You did? I did. Wow. I didn't only because I figured you wouldn't. <laughs> it, it, it was only one match. It was a 21 man New Japan Rambo. Rambo? To challenge for the provisional King of Pro Wrestling 2021 trophy on night two. So the last four people in it face each other on night two. Oh, okay. So it's essentially. Their version of a Royal Rumble match, but it's every minute. Okay. But you can win by pinfall or submission also. So fling them over, pinfall, submission. Done. Right. So it's basically a casino battle royal. The match went 34 minutes and 40 oh, seconds. Jesus Christ. It was a pre-show match. How is it going that long? Fuck Dave Mouser gave it one and three quarters. He's an overrating piece of shit. It's a battle royal. Three and a quarter? I Three and a quarter? And a quarter. Holy three, shit. Three quarters on okay. the start. My bad. <laughs> um, the wrestlers took their sweet ass time to get to the fucking ring. Yeah, and it's fucking Tokyo Dome, so that's like 14 minutes of just entrances. Uh... Bland battle royal action, forearms. That's it. Yo, dog! I heard you like forearms. It, it's a New Japan show, so it's, yeah. It's instead of having punches, they do forearms. <laughs> um, yeah. It was it was terrible, just, just terrible. It's uh, terrible Chase, for New Japan. Yep. Chase Owens, Bad Luck Fale, Bushi, and Yano. 
with the last four. Okay, so we'll find out on night two whether or not that match was any good. <clears throat> um, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Uh, number technically the number one contendership for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship starts off uh, every sh- every year. Takahashi versus El Fantasmo match went seventeen minutes and forty six seconds. Fuck, Day Monster gave it four stars. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay, just, yeah, that was uh, really really great way to start off the fucking yeah. show. Just start off the two nights. Now I watched them back to back. So I I, I didn't wa- I watched one one night and then I watched one the next morning and then I watched Hard to Kill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, I'm sorry for Hard to Kill's ratings right there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, it was a great great match. Uh, lots of big moves and counters. Phantasm really impressed me, even though I have seen him work before. Mm. Uh, just a great like I see you just had a great way to open up uh, night one. Yeah. Normally I doubt we're going to be. Shit. Yeah, but. Because I... I'm going to butcher all these Japanese names. <laughs> except this one. But IWGP Tag Team Championship. I'm not going to do the racist. Ah, double JP like you do. Uh, Tag Team Championships. The Dangerous Techers Defend Against Girls to Destiny. Gorilla. 19 minutes and 18 seconds. Fuck Day Monster gave it three and a half. The only reason why he gave it three and a half was he's bagging on uh, the Young Bucks and they think it's a shoot. Or not the Young Bucks, uh, the Good Brothers. And Meltzer thinks it's a shoot. Well, Meltzer's a mark and a piece of shit. Wow. And the sky is blue. The grass is green. I love Asians. It is snowing like a motherfucker. That is true, yes. <laughs> the ground is white. It was so funny, as we're going off tangents, they're calling for like all this snow. I wake up this morning, I got like no snow here. You know, I'm like, that's <laughs> weird. And then, you know, then I got a little bit of snow, then it stopped. I'm like, okay. So then I shoveled, go inside, and about two hours later, it just starts coming down. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, there it is. I just realized something, and for people who are watching us on YouTube and not listening to us, first of all, if you're listening to us on Spotify or wherever you're at, thank you for listening. If you desire to watch us as well, we are on YouTube uh, at the username Sleazy and the Fat Man. But the funny part is our room colors, because of the lighting, look exactly the same. Yes, I'm actually at a different <laughs> location for the next couple months. So normally you see the yellow background with the banner. I'm actually in a way nicer place for the next couple months. Cool. So, but yeah, it does look like it. Uh, it's not though. Uh, it's actually gray. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I I remember that it's a lot grayer than. No, they actually just painted this. Before. Oh, did they? Yes. Oh, was it cream before? It was like a cream. Yes. Yeah, that's but this right. This is now gray. So and, uh, anyway, anyway, uh, I Girl is a destiny. I give it three three quarters. I thought it was an, another great match, another back and forth match with a lot of action and a lot of counters. It, I actually bumped it up higher. I thought it was four stars. So it yeah, it, I really liked it. I I thought it was a great match, and it was a once again a great tag team match. You know, uh, people look past Girl is uh, of Destiny. And I don't know why. I really don't. They're like one of those teams that has had a lot of gold, but nobody really talks about them when they talk about, you know, the greatest tag teams in the in the divisions of, you know, New Japan, of Ring of Honor, Impact, WWE, so on. They're never in that conversation yet. They're very, very good. Well, yeah. No, they are. Well, they, they just, what, broke seven-time now tag team champions? Yeah, they're seven-time ch- champs now. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Technically, it's for the IWGP United States Challenger Certificate. So the number one contendership. For the it's United the States. money in the bank, but for the U.S. The title. US title. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kenta versus Ko- Kojima. I think I'm. I think it's Kojima. Uh, 
14 minutes, 12 seconds. Fuck Dave Meltzer. Give us three and three quarters. Yeah, no. Yeah, I didn't like it either. Uh, I gave it three stars. Huh? Yeah. I, I You didn't like it, but you gave it three stars. I didn't like it as much as Meltzer. I gave it one and three quarters. Whoa, wait, what? Yeah. Okay, now that's too long. I don't know what Meltzer was thinking, but this match was mutt at best. Too long, even at 14 minutes. I will agree it was too long. It should have been shorter. And some of the spots were bad at best. I can't remember. There's one. I don't know. They just didn't click to me. They just didn't click. Um, It was a... It reminds me a little bit of what happens with the never over open weight title where you just get a just a bunch of just shitty spots strung together and Kent is way above this honestly I mean the only reason why they wanted to do this was because they had to stretch it out until they could get Moxley back over um but honestly they should have just had him cut a promo and leave it at that they didn't need this match oh I agree uh, but then you're you're discounting probably one of your biggest stars in Kenta. Yeah. So I get why they did it, but you know whatever. Yeah, I just don't like it. Tanahashi versus Great Okan, seventeen minutes and thirteen seconds. Fuck Dave Meltzer gave it three and three quarters. I, okay, first of all. Now, keep in mind, I don't keep too much tabs on New Japan, but I had no idea who Great Okan was. I didn't either. Okay, so that's just... Um, okay. That being said, Tanahashi did... I mean, I love him. He's a great professional wrestler. He could not carry this guy to a decent match. Um... I gave this two stars. It was not good. And I say that with love to Tanahashi, but I just really, it, it's kind of similar to how you feel about the Kenta match. It, these two guys just didn't click for me. I'm going to reverse it from the Kenta match. I gave it three stars. What? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I thought it was, it was a good match. Nothing more. Like it's not, it, it was, it's a good match match like they that was it like they went out there had a good match okay next like, <laughs> at, wow i did not feel, it it lacked a spark for me it really did it really it felt like it was nothing more than a way to to boost up great okan which i guess it did you had him against the ace of new japan on our, the biggest show of the year, or one of the nights of the biggest show of the year. So obviously his stock has gone up since then, but it, it, it was a lot of meh. I'll mm-hmm. just leave it at that. Okay. Okada versus Osprey. 35 minutes and 41 seconds. Meltzer gave it five and a quarter stars. Cause of course he did. Should I start with my nipple play now, or should I wait till later? I'm waiting till later. Okay, because it was amazing. It was. It's not five and a quarter stars, but it was definitely a four and a half star match. I absolutely agree with you. Um, the my only complaint, if anything, is it was a little too long. Mm-hmm. Um, but that other than that, the the two of them meld well together. It was. Well done. The storyline was great. The, the in match psychology was great. Um, there was, if I'm remembering correctly, there was like a minor, um, spot on the, on the floor, on the, uh, on the announcer table that didn't go as well as it should have. But other than that, that was it. It was really good. Uh, I put another awesome match that built well, but with Osprey being heel, he can't do what he do, does best, and that's his flips and shit. 
because as a heel, you don't want, you know, there's, you can speak in the Tokyo Dome, you can only clap. Um, <laughs> you don't get that, don't want to get that pop because you're a heel. So he did, he did do some of that, but he didn't do as much of it. Yeah. So I kind of think it took away from the match, but it did prove that he can work any style, except the flips and shit, which is, yes, a nitpick saying, oh, it didn't, it took away from what he does best, but he does the other stuff very well. And I think that's what the yeah. match was intended to do, to showcase him that. And he's ready for the main event of a big show. Oh, for sure. He he's been abs- that way for a while. Yeah. But I think this is the coming out where people be like, oh, he had a great match with Okada. We'll probably talk about this later. Um, but let's say for the sake of argument, Jay White didn't come back. Spoiler, by the way, he did come back. Yeah, I know. Um, for people who don't know New Japan, right. because there was there was a rumor that he was going to show up the Royal Rumble. Yeah, and okay, a, every no. year, every, every year. year. So, well, ever since AJ Styles did it, there's yeah. been a rumor every year. Mm-hmm. So, um, but had Jay White really did leave New Japan, I would only assume that they would slot Will Osprey in that role. But, um. Even so, he is absolutely ready for the, the the main event. He is ready to. Honestly, he would probably be my take if they separate the titles again. He would take the uh, IC belt. They need to. I think they need to separate the titles. Yeah. Spoiler. Mm-hmm. Main event night one: IWGP Intercontinental and Heavyweight Championship. Naito defense against Ibushi. Thirty-one minutes, eighteen seconds. I also give it five stars. Uh-oh. Um, I thought it was an excellent match. It was not five stars. It was not five stars. It was not four and a half stars. It was four stars match. Um, I, I would go four stars on this. It, it, it lacked the gravity of previous, the, we talked a lot on our award show about the two main events of Russell Kingdom last year. Both of those had a story. Both of those had a, you know, a huge feeling. You had Naito trying to overcome and you had Ibushi failing and, you know, all this stuff going on. This didn't have that, even though it was Ibushi's cash in, you know, it was his, his spot. His cash in. Well, he, he got in there through yeah. that, but. It it just didn't have the oh my god this is actually happening even though he actually he he won the match you know but it just didn't feel like he won the big one you know what I mean it felt too late almost uh I want to say it was too late and I'll get to that when we talk about the night two main event but I thought it was an I gave it four and a half stars I thought it was an awesome match it okay. was your typical Ubushi match Kingdom. New Japan main event. Like, funny enough, has to go at least 30 minutes, has to fucking, you know, start slow and built up. And that fucking knee murdered fucking Naito. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. The man knows how to sell. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. And I liked how I think last year, both. Shows both days were like six hours long. Mm-hmm. This was only like three and a half, four hours long. Same with night. Yeah, two. they kept six, six matches on one. I think only six matches on the other. Well, here's the other thing: is that yeah. even with the pre-show, you only had the one match. Last year yeah. there was like two matches. Um, there was, was it? It had to have been night two. The was it the dark match in night two where they had the stardom? Girls working? Yes. Was it was this, it on the main year? show or was it on the dark match? The show or last year? This show. It they was were, a dark. It there was, was a dark? No, yeah, because okay. there was no pre-show to this tonight, too. Okay. So I, I do know that they were supposed to work a match this they year. They did. It was a dark match. Yeah. So, but I remember not seeing it, so I was like, what, what gives? Because, you know, me, Asian... Wrestling, right. women, you know, whatever. So, night one was really good. You got fucking, for me, four and a half, 
four and a half, three, mm, one, one and three quarters, and then uh, three and three quarters and four. So that's a really good fucking show. Right? Yeah. It's an NXT level show. And then night two. Opens with the provisional King of Pro Wrestling 2021 trophy. Chase Owens versus Ibushi versus Yano versus Bad Luck Fale. Only seven minutes and 34 seconds. Thank God. Yeah. The match with, or Monster gave it um, a star and three quarters. He's an overrating piece of shit. I gave a star and a, star and a quarter. I gave it um, one star. <laughs> um, what a dumb finish. Uh, hitting a finisher. Taking forever to set it up the spot, and Bushi having to lay there like a douchebag. How long was he on the fucking canvas? For Yano to come in and fucking steal the pin. I could have called my great grandmother and had her come over and sit down and bake some cookies. Which is pretty goddamn hard because she's been dead for 12 years. I'm just saying she did. Yeah, it was so fucking, it was bad. This is one of the rare times I've seen a true botch in New Japan, especially on their biggest show. You don't normally see something like that that's misbooked that that much. Because I, I consider that a misbooking almost. Because the spot went the way it was supposed to. It just took too long to actually execute it. Yeah. Bad, 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 bad. bad it's a bad, WWE bad. booked fucking multi-man match. You love those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll I, talk about more of that. IWGP Junior Tag Team Championship. Suzuki Gun versus 1 or 8. I'm not going to name them all because I will pronounce them. Uh, 13 minutes, 20 seconds. Fuck Damn, I'll give it 3 and a quarter. I gave it two and three quarters. Um, why was it Sugu- Suguki, Sugu- oh my fucking god, Suzuki Gun disqualified for constantly throwing the referee in front of them? And that's a trope that happens all fucking night. Yeah, it does. It was stupid. So the atomic drop hurts, uh, Chigachi, but when he, Okay, I can't remember my horn. But when he uses his <laughs> ass, it doesn't hurt. The, we're not going to talk about that. The action was sloppy, and a step and a step off to start, but it did get better as the match went on. I'll for a match featuring Suzuki, and I don't understand. I really don't. My problem with all of this is that we're in a pandemic. This is a big show with a lot of people in the middle of this pandemic who spent a lot of money for this show. And back-to-back matches were not very good. This, This is not a good way to start a new Japan show. Oh, I gave it then, two. <laughs> I gave it two and a half, but it's like I'll give it a show. Yeah, it was, but th- oh, but then it gets extremely fucking better. <laughs> yes, that's true. Never open weight championship. <laughs> Jingo Tagagi versus Jeff Cobb. Twenty one minutes eleven seconds. Fuck Day Mouser gave it five stars. Don't you dare say it. Because it wasn't a five star match, but it was good. It was good. absolutely a five star. No, match. it wasn't. I fucking loved this match. It was so great much. match. It was. Ab- I fucking loved it. I think it was the best match. Spoiler: out of all the nights, really, out of every three shows, this was the best match. Oh my wow. god! Wow, I fucking loved it. Fucking loved it. See, I gave it four it and a half stars. Every, but they have everything. Great wrestling, hard hitting, like a never open weight championship. Yeah. Match does, but also had a bit of psychology mixed in with the injury angles going on in the match. I thought it was absolutely fucking fantastic. It didn't go too long. It didn't overstay its welcome. Fucking phenomenal. Wow. I think this is the first time. I think this is the first time I've rated something lower that you've rated five stars. 
No, stop. That you, you've you overrated, you overrating piece of shit? I'm not overrating piece of shit. Yeah, you are an overrating piece of shit. It was a four this, and a half star match. This match was fucking awesome. It was really, really, really amazing. Five stars. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> Would you like your cum towel back, please? Yeah. I got a, I got a, got a towel right here. There you go. See? Um, Evil versus Sonata. 23 minutes, 40 seconds. Actually, let me go back. Why was it not a five-star match? <laughs> you laugh. It's too short. <laughs> oh, you fucking dick. <laughs> I, I wanted more it of it. I wanted more of it. So you're just, oh, you're a fucker. It was a five-star match. It was not a five-star match. You want him more? See, but what? That makes no sense. It was so good. You want more of it? Yeah. It was too short. Was your problem? Yeah. And that's why. Because it ended they too quickly. Give you more? Yes. It was a five star. Oh fuck you! <laughs> it was, fuck you, sleazy race at five stars. Okay. <laughs> Evil versus Sonata. Twenty three minutes forty seconds. Meltzer gave it four and a quarter. What? Meltzer gave it four and a quarter. It was a four-star match. I mean, whatever. They could have scrapped this match and given... Oh, fuck. <laughs> they should have scrapped the first match and given the never open weight title more time. Yes. And to be honest... There you go. I didn't think you needed more time. It's a bitchy nitpick. I, I, I will admit that. I will absolutely admit it's a bitchy nitpick. But. No, I know you're going to call me over. I gave this match uh, four. I agree with Mouser, four and a quarter. Um, We're close, great, though. Awesome match. Dick to go was great. <laughs> and I laughed at that top rope spot with him. Yeah. On it. Evil barely hit the ropes and he's fucking selling it. And then he fucking drops and you hear him go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was well done. It was a very nice match. Um and, and it's and again, but and then it's, again another fucking grabbing the referee. Yeah. It's all over the show. I mean it's still two guys that know each other really well. Right. So I mean that that them not having a four star plus match would be a problem, a real problem, because these guys can make magic in the ring, and you and I both know that. Um, but I, I don't get the ref bump. I, I really don't get the, or not the bump, actually. It was shoving and stuff. Right. But it's like, the, it, it reeks of, oh, God, WWE. That's the kind of shit WWE started doing, and it just got worse and worse and worse. It's okay. Like, don't these guys talk about, okay, these are the spots I'm going to do in the match? And I and I understand it was the Bullet Club were the ones who were doing it the whole night, but just... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it just irks me. Seeing it once is okay, but doing it multiple times in a match, and then seeing it multiple times again in another match... Damn it, D'Lo! Um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Hashi Ishimura versus Bone Soldier. Takahashi, 25 minutes of 31 seconds. Book Dame Master gave it four and three quarters. I'm not wrong. Because I gave it four and a quarter, four and a half. And I agree with you. Another awesome match. Um, this show has been fucking great. Uh, high flying of submissions with psychology mix in. One thing I didn't like was why work the hand in night one on Takahashi, but then work the soldier uh, the shoulder night two. Because why not? Also, another mo- oh yeah, they moved the turnbuckle pad a couple times during the night, different matches too, and they did it again in this one. I'm like, don't these? And then I wrote this where I wrote it. Don't you guys talk about? talk to each other about their spots no <laughs> no they don't so yeah. i mean i have no other input to that you you hit pretty much everything i was gonna hit so yeah but you know whatever uh iwgp intercontinental and heavyweight championship kota Bushi defense against jay white 
match went 48 minutes and five seconds, which is a Tokyo Dome Wrestle Kingdom record in length, I guess. What? Yeah. No, it's not. That's what they said. Didn't Omega and Okada go 60? Not one of their the matches? Dome. Not at the Tokyo Dome. Their first match went Not definitely longer than 48 minutes. They said that they went like 45. And this went 48. Oh, for fuck's sake. I know. Okay, let's start with the bad. Oh, okay, well, Meltzer gave it four, or sorry, five and a quarter star. Fuck him. Um, first of all, the match was 20 minutes too long. Um, it's n- five, five and a quarter. Yep. Three and a half. Um, huh? way, 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 way too long. And I don't understand. I, I, okay. Let's start with the obvious. I don't like Jay White. I don't like how he works. I don't like how he is as a character. I, I, I just don't get it. This match did nothing to change that for me. And Kota Ibushi obviously is one of the best wrestlers out there. You know, definitely in New Japan, usually is in conversation for wrestler of the year pretty much every year. This felt like an afterthought. And once again, you know, kind of like night one, it was, it felt like it was too late anyway. And I feel like it was even more too late. It was just, uh, just to make sure that Ibushi is the greatest wrestler ever in New Japan. He's the greatest champion ever in New Japan. So therefore he beats Jay White. In a grueling 48 minute match that damn near put me to sleep. That's all I got to say. I literally disagree with everything you just wanted. Oh my said. God. Here we go. <laughs> Four and three quarters. I thought it was another awesome match. I thought Jay Roy was fucking fantastic in this match. <laughs> As that fucking shitty ass fucking heel talking shit. And then doing it. Like I said, it was last year's Wrestle Kingdom that Jay White started to grow on me. The, it, it, this year is no exception. Um, another fucking bullying the ref spot. Um, and it did go way too fucking long. And I just looked it up. Okada Omega went 46 45. So, so a, like a minute, minute long. And a half. Fuck off. <laughs> you fucking marks right. on commentary. Um, and the big match feel I thought was more evident here because Jay White was the one that took the briefcase from Abushi. So Abushi hasn't beaten Jay White one on one. Cause remember, yeah. Jay White also beat him last year at Wrestle Kingdom too. Yes. So I thought the big match feel was this night. I agree with you with night one, but night two, I felt like it, it worked better here. Like, there's only two things I hate about this match. The fucking length and the fucking so, stupid-ass bully in the referee spot. Yeah. I... I don't know what to tell you, man. I just... Eh. My anti-Mark J. White cologne is, you know, just heavy today, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a disappointing main event to a show that had a lot of very high highs and some pretty low lows. Um, Night 2 was fat. Before the, besides the first two matches, out of the last four matches, I think my lowest rating was four stars. I thought it was fucking phenomenal Night 2. Night 1 was a more mixed bag for me. But overall, it is going to be another tough... If we combine both nights into one show. Which I think we have to. Yeah, we have to. We kind of didn't, we didn't talk about that much on air on our last show, but just as a general rule, if it's branded as 
a single event, even though it's multiple nights, I think we should count them as one event. Okay. I really do believe that. No, I, and I agree. And I think this is going to be an, a hard fucking event to fucking to top. I really do. It, it was fucking fantastic. Yeah. And and I'm not a big New Japan mark, but I thoroughly enjoyed both nights, especially that never open weight title that did not end with a clothesline. <laughs> oh boy. Uh yeah. I I feel like there's a lot of amazing wrestling here. So if you have not watched a New Japan show, first of all, what the fuck are you doing? Second of all, New Japan World is nine ninety nine nine hundred and ninety nine yen a month. You can go through it and get English commentary on all their major shows. Um, I believe New Japan's also either looking or has secured a new weekly deal for the U.S. market. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know where it is, um, but I I believe they have. So, uh, check them out, please. You know, th- th- there's a reason why they were really starting to expand into the U.S. and they were really going to be a thing until the pandemic ha- happened. So, well, uh, impact hard to kill. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Shamrock. Rosemary and Crazy Steve versus Tino Dashwood and Caleb with a K. With a K. Eight minutes, 55 seconds. Fuck, Dave Meltzer gave it a star and a half. I don't actually remember this match. (laughs) I'm wrong. And my notes were simply, it was meh. (laughs) That that was my notes. Those are quite notes. Uh, Amazing notes. What? Yeah. Amazing. uh, That is Dave Meltzer level journalism right there. I know it is. God damn. I'm going to rush through this show so fucking bad. (laughs) Old school rules match or simply a a, a a hardcore match? Tommy Dreamer, Rhino, and Cousin Jake versus Eric Young, Cody Diener, and Joe Doring. Nine minutes, 55 seconds. Mouser also gave this match a star and a half. I gave it two. Nothing special. At least Eric, the right team won and Eric Young, Cody Diener, and Joe Doring. I don't remember this match either. That's it. Did you even watch the show? I'm not sure I did. <laughs> you watched the wrong show again? Maybe I did. No, I watched the show because I remember a particular spot that somebody popped up out of. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I talked to you about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Championship Tournament Final. Havoc and Nevea versus... Uh, Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Eight minutes and 40 seconds. Fuck Day Monster gave it a star and a quarter. I think that was a disservice. I liked it. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it was great, but it was better than a star and a quarter. Oh, yeah. I, I gave it three stars. I, I yeah. thought it was way better than Mouser did. Uh, probably because there was, I literally put probably because there was no Asian in it. But, ah! And it wasn't a Tokyo Dome. I thought it was good. It was nothing special, but it was better than I expected. And I think the right team won again. Yeah, absolutely. I gave it two and a half stars. So, I mean, I, we're in the same ballpark there. And we're definitely not underrating pieces of shit like Dave Meltzer is. Yep. We go to the triple threat. Oh, no. No, we don't. I forgot there was a bonus match. Yep. Or not even a bonus match. There was a... <sighs> Ace Austin comes out. Yeah. Pretty much does an open challenge. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. Literally in my notes, it went, uh, Zach fucking Ryder. But also in my notes, Impact might be the smartest wrestling company in the world. They kept it short because they know Ryder couldn't work a fucking match. Wow. Evident is this case, 
because Ryder looked like fucking shit, and Ace Austin gave it the best he could in the time given a half star. <sighs> Radio silence, huh? Radio silence. I will say I'm wrong. I mean, unlike AEW, he will have the big fish small pond syndrome here because in AEW is probably going to be a mid Carter. Yeah, similar to Sean Spears, actually. In Impact, he's going to be a a mid Carter. No, I don't think so. I think they're going to push him. I really do believe they're going to push him. Or they have such a short-term contract on him, they'll use him for spots, and then two months from now, he'll be back in wherever he goes to bang Peyton Royce or whoever. I, I can't Chelsea remember. Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. I can't remember. Alan Spears is bagging Peyton Royce. See, you got me fucking... I forgot which mid-carter I was talking about, okay? <sighs> I mean, they look the same. Uh, it's the same girl. Uh, they look the same, same girl. Triple threat match. Slizzy's favorite. For the Exhibition Championship. Manic defends against Chris Bay. And Rohit Raju. 13 minutes and 50 seconds. Fuck Dave Meltzer gave it three and a half. I'm wrong. Oh, wow. I thought it was a really good match. But the whole manic thing is so fucking stupid. Like, so it's not TJP. So he has a mask on. So they take a mask off to reveal face paint of the mask. But then the face paint starts wearing off because of the sweat. And it's clearly TJP. And even Matt Stryker, who I'll get to at the end of the show, is like, gets referring to him to TJP. And then starts calling him Maddox. I'm thinking people in heads just goes, what are you fucking doing? Stop referring to him as TJP. You can't. You... It was so stupid. Well, the worst part, the stupidity of it is that what's on his fucking chest? Right. The Philippines fucking flag, you fucking idiots. How many Philippine wrestlers do you know? I mean, seriously, count every single Filipino wrestler that you've ever seen, ever, ever. The three that I have, if there is three, there's probably more than three. But yeah. <laughs> there's only one. <laughs> Granted, he had three different gimmicks. Suicide Manic and TJP, but there's only one. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, it is the stupid, and he's got the same tattoos because he's not wearing a full bodysuit anymore. Right. So it's like, are you fucking dumb? Or it's like saying that, um, it makes Raju look stupid. Yeah. Because he knows it's TJP, but then he dismasks him and you can clearly, even through the face mate, Tell us TJP, but yeah, it's all like, no, nah, that's not TJP. It's like Mr. America levels of stupid. I think that's kind of what they're trying to go with. No, no, because but they're saying they're making it seem like it's a uh, shoot, you know? Well, they're taking it too seriously. Yeah. I was say. It's. <sighs> And it's, a, and it's absolutely a disservice to TJP, honestly, because the man can fucking work a match. Mm -hmm. But he's stuck with this fucking stupid gimmick in a division that, granted, yes, was made for him, basically. But he's got to do stupid shit now. Makes no sense. What'd you think of the match, though? Oh, the match was fine. I mean, it was three and a half stars as well. I mean... I. For a triple threat match, but it was an X Division triple threat match. So they tend to throw in more multi man shit like that in there. So I'm okay with it. If you want to be a mark, listen to this. 
uh, oh, no, wait, it was, championship. It was next. It was the next match. Sorry. Deanna Perrazzo versus uh, Taya Valkyrie. 11 minutes and 40 seconds. Monster gave it two and a quarter. What? Two and a quarter? Really? Yeah. This is a three and a half star match as well. I absolutely love the work that Deanna did. Am I... Did I not watch the same show as everyone else did again? I really enjoyed okay, it. Okay, match for a house show. No, it was great. Well, it wasn't great, but... It was an okay match for It was a good. It's three and a half stars. What are you doing to me, man? It was an okay match for a house show. That's really what I had. It was an okay match for a house show. Wow. Okay, well... I don't know what to tell you. It, you you compare this to a lot of the the rosters out there. Their roster is still pretty goddamn good. You know, you watch. Um, we'll talk about this later with the women's rumble, but there's still definitely a skill gap between the lower members of the WWE women's roster and the upper set. There really isn't that much difference in terms of skill in the knockouts yeah they're all average or below no i wouldn't say that i would say they're i wouldn't say they're below but they're about average to decent there's nobody out there that's like oh my god this is amazing like like the gail kims and the awesome kongs of the yesteryear and stuff and madison rain and whatnot but there's still a lot of great talent in that pool. Whereas you've got, you know, like the Charlotte Flair's, Sasha Banks, Bailey and Asuka and all them. And then you have the lower tiers. The, forgive me for saying this, Zack Ryder, but Chelsea Greens and um, whatnot. I mean, even even uh, Casey Catanzaro, who's a, a very athletic person. But to actually tell a story in the ring, she doesn't really have that yet. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what to say other than that. Okay. Ethan Page versus the Karate Kid. Hang on. I, I, you go ahead and, and explain how bad you thought this is. And I'm going to try and find... I thought this was the worst thing I've ever seen on a wrestling show. Ever. Are you looking at Ethan Page? Yeah, Page? I wanted to... Um, This was... I, I didn't time it. It was maybe about three or four minutes. It wasn't that long. But what the fuck was this? It, I don't know what it was. What was it supposed to be? What story... The story they're trying to tell is that Ethan Page is dead. And then the Karate Man was supposed to like live on. I guess that was what they were going with. He was going to be the Karate Man from now on, and Ethan Page is dead, but he's no longer with the company anymore, right? So, so I thought this was absolutely, like I said, the worst thing I've ever fucking seen on a wrestling show. And that includes some of that fucking deletion shit. That was <laughs> god-awful. I'm I'm trying to find what he said about it. And the House of Horrors, which was fucking terrible. The House of Horrors was absolutely garbage. And this was worse. Um God damn it. I can't I Oh, there it is. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. So I obviously there's no rating of this. It's, it's no. It's not anything. Okay. Um so, let me see if I, if I got it. Okay, yeah, this is it. So, this is what he said about it. Now, keep in mind, everyone knew Ethan Page was leaving. The other thing is that Josh Alexander, his tag team partner, wasn't leaving. He was staying. Yes. Okay? And I'll get to that in a moment. But 
This is what he said. Um, I'm going to take a full-blown break from social media. I'll be staying active on my personal Patreon as much as I can. Probably this group, too. It was a subreddit. I, I don't know what it was. Uh, but man, last night sucked. I'm so embarrassed with how Impact lazily edited that segment last night and forced it to be a joke. I felt the thought of the same guys fighting each other was comedy enough, and the more serious we took it, the better, because the reaction would be. But because I left the company, they lied to my face and did what they wanted to do the whole time. I'm sorry for if any of my fans paid for that pay-per-view and felt cheated. I honestly feel the free version I gave away was made with more love, care, and attention to detail. Sadly, I have no control over the creative or the final product, and the editor refused to send it to me beforehand. So I saw it live with you guys and was surrounded by my family, all scratching their heads at that high school project level delivery on a pay-per-view. I pray people know that I didn't edit that gar- hot garbage. I actually begged Impact not to even have Karate Man on TV. I only wanted it for my YouTube channel. But we don't get to write the shows. We just get the scripts and do our best. I don't know what else to say. It breaks my heart this company refuses to respect its talent or its fan base on a regularly basis. I tried. Oh, well, life goes on. Doors closed. Let's focus on next. Blah, 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 blah. Um... So basically, if you are familiar with Ethan Page's YouTube channel, that's where Karate Man came from. It was never meant to be anything on impact, as he says in the the post. That being said, there's a lot of conflicting stories about this. Some people said Ethan Page absolutely wanted it on the show, and the the Karate Man segment that we watched here was only because he wouldn't do business because the real thing that they wanted him to do was to face Josh and Alexander and put him over before he left. And Ethan basically said no. And I because, doubt that because they, they had indie bookings as a tag team and whatever. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. Either. Um, it's it's no secret that I've worked with Ethan Page before at Excite, and you know, I think he's a really great person. I I've I've always held him in pretty high regard. Obviously, he's also a promoter in in Canada. Um, but I I I really believe that what we saw there was absolutely not the plan. Uh, whatever was the plan. Had to have been better than this, but this was just, he's absolutely right. It was hot garbage on a fucking trash can lid. I, I don't know what to say other than the fact that they wasted 15 minutes of my life. It wasn't even 15 minutes. It felt like it. It was like three or four. Wasn't no, it felt long? like 15 fucking minutes <laughs> of my life were, were wait. Part of it was that I had to watch it and then I had to spend 10 minutes thinking about it going, what the fuck did I just watch? After I warned you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I watched this show before you did. Mm-hmm. And I warned you that. that Honestly. Or shit I've ever fucking seen in my life. I, you've said that before. And sometimes we don't see eye to eye, especially when it comes to comedy stuff. But this it one. funny. Yeah, well, I didn't know that at the time. So I. You and I don't see eye to eye in comedy, but on this very specific promo match, whatever the fuck you want to call it, absolutely 100% agree with you. Hot fucking shit. I, oh my God. I, I think I've seen bigger steaming piles in GCW. Thank God you didn't say the other promotion. I did not. I wasn't going to. <laughs> Barbed Wire Massacre. Eddie Edwards versus Sammy Callahan. 18 minutes, 50 seconds. Massacre gave it three and three quarters. You're the Eddie Edwards, Mark. I am. I gave it four, but I... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I gave it four, but wait, hold on. Let I me like, finish. I like my Eddie Edwards as... The pro wrestler. I don't like my Eddie Edwards as the hardcore wrestler. 
the last couple of years, that's what he's been doing. Yeah. He's been kind of venturing off. And I'm like, you're still a great fucking technical wrestler. And they're saying, you got to freshen up your character every once in a while. I understand that completely. And I get where he's coming from. So I don't fault him in doing something different. That's just not how I prefer my Eddie Edwards. Um, <laughs> it's not how I prefer my Eddie Edwards. Uh, but this match was brutal. Uh, using real barbed wire. Come on, guys. What the fuck? <laughs> you guys are nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guarantee you, Sammy Callahan said, hey, man, let's ooh, fuck this, you know, fake gimmick shit. Let's do real barbed wire. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? Aided. And he kicking out of a pilot driver off the ropes through a barbed wire pallet or wood or plat. Two by four, or whatever the fuck it is, drywall Cons- sheet, whatever the fuck. Yeah, considering that Sammy's finish on top of that, hated it, hated. Sammy kicking out of the Boston knee party into a barbed wire chair to the face. We're both men put in a hell of a fucking effort. <laughs> <laughs> it was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, it is, um. So I I know I don't know why I'm going down this tangent, but it's semi related, I guess. Did you watch the 24 hour live stream of GCW? No. Did you watch any of it? No. Okay, so I did myself a disservice and I watched it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, now keep in mind now now I'm I'm just gonna say. <laughs> See, this is how I kill Fat Man. You gave me the Rona on that one. Yeah. I'm going to be inquiring for a new co-host soon. Um, I There are a lot of professional wrestlers that work in GCW that are good. There are a lot of professional wrestlers that work in GCW that are okay. And then there are a lot of professional wrestlers that think, uh, I'm a good wrestler because I know how to pop light tubes on other people. And I was unfortunate to watch a light tube death match that was dumb, dumb, really dumb, really dumb, really fucking dumb, 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 dumb. These are fucking light tubes that they're piercing each other with. Legit. Well, sometimes legit. Sometimes they're blading 14 times right in front of the camera during the match. I mean, literally. He's, he flipped over onto his belly and he's like. I think one of them is I think one would be suffice. Nope. Had to do it 14,000 times in front of the fucking camera. Now, keep in mind, there's like 15 fans in there, and they're probably all like workers, family, and shit like that. There's no real fans that you can see in there. So the only thing you have to do is hide it from the one camera that's looking right fucking at you. Oh. <sighs> But it's okay. Because at least Eddie Edwards kicked out of a pile driver through drywall. I I mean they're they're get the problem with ultraviolent death matches is the Paul Heyman theory. Is that when you give them one chair shot to the head. The fans love it. It's great. Then you do it again, and they love it. And then you do it again, and they love it a little less. So you start doing two chair shots to the head, and then three chair shots to the head, and then five chair shots to the head, and then before you know it, every match has to have chair shots or else nobody pops. And that's the main problem with deathmatch wrestling, at least in this in this era, is that if you don't start with you know, light tubes and whatnot and barbed wire in this case, you know, and immediately going to those spots, you don't get the pop. 
And while Impact doesn't do that kind of stuff, there's still a, a, a semblance of desensitization uh, of it. If that's even a word, whatever. Desensitize? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's... I don't know. I, I'm i not... I wasn't... I love the... I appreciate the fact that they both put their heart and soul in this, okay? I just wasn't a fan of it. And it was a... It was too much for me. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that. It wasn't as bad as how some of those matches can go in Impact. Concrete Jungle immediately comes to mind, but this was certainly not a match that I like to glorify, let's just say. And just put it that way. Just leave it at that. Okay. Kenny Omega, Carl Aston, and Doc Gallows versus Rich Swan, Chris Sabin. And Alex Shelley of Motor City Machine Guns. Yes, we're finally getting Good Brothers versus Motor City Machine, Machine Guns. And and uh, what? What? Hey, right? yeah, yeah. Or is it this way? Is it this way? The whole Motor City hand sign. Is it this way? This way. I. I, I... Anyway, it's great. Great sixty. iPhone. I didn't say moose yet. <laughs> Versus Rich Swan, Chris Sabin, and Moose. iPhone. Thank you. <laughs> I guess Shelly is like works. He's a physical therapist, I think. Physical therapist. That's what yeah. it is. And he had a he couldn't keep traveling back and forth or else he had to put in quarantine or had to get like a COVID vaccination or, or something like that. And he couldn't travel back and forth. So they had to write him off. Um, but yeah. Um, 20 minutes to 30 seconds. Fuck the monster gave this only four and a quarter for a Kenny Omega match. Yeah, I know. Oh, it wasn't in the Tokyo Dome. Fair. It was in Nashville. I'm wrong. I gave it four and a quarter. Also. Wow, what? <laughs> um, but fuck you, Kenny Omega. Okay, so yeah. Literally. So, so everything you fucking did to that match. Yeah. So let's go to Impact Wrestling and make them look so good that they're on your level that you no sell every fucking move you take. Every move. Literally. Every move. Moose does a Spanish fly. Moose. Moose. Fucking moose. iPhone does a Spanish fly on you off the top fucking rope. You get right back up. Fuck. That should have been the end of the match. Fuck you. The worst part about this is that had Alex Shelley made it, this match wouldn't have nearly has been as good. Oh, I agree. Because Moose was the star of that match. 100% was. Bar none. There is nobody in that match on, on the impact side that made a bigger impact <laughs> than Moose did. And it proved, at least in most people's mind and definitely mine that he is absolutely a main eventer and not just an impact, but wherever he lands. Mm -hmm. yep. And, and I'm not saying that as a moose mark, there is a little bit of that, you know, from our old days, but still it, it legitimately, he showed that he could go full baby face fire, even during the middle of a very, very heated heel run. And was able to transition through a lot of stuff, do a lot of different baby face related moves. He fucking did a standing moonsault for fuck's sake. You know, the man knew exactly what he needed to do to show that he was a face in a match that normally he wouldn't be. 
So uh, kudos to Moose. Um, I'm still glad, excuse me, I'm still glad that they're kind of still continuing on with this invasion angle, but honestly, it's if, really an invasion though. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like, it's barely it's, one. Like, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head. It's like, oh, can he make a show up in impact? Why? No one cause? cares. No one cares. Cause? Yes, they popped impact's rating. Yes, they probably got a bigger bump in the buy rate for this pay per view. But th- yes, I understand they're helping out each other in real life. But the storyline is Kenny Omega went to Impact because question mark because Don Callis is his you yeah know, manager or whatever or friend. So family friend, they're family, so, you know. Okay, so. But he's the AEW World Champion, and he goes right to Impact, but then he keeps appearing on AEW. Like, Well, then you have the whole super elite thing. I don't... I don't get it. What? So he leaves AEW, takes the title to apparently go to Impact, and then he has a sit-down interview and says, well, I'm the World Champ. I can do what I want. And then just goes back and forth between the shows? Yeah, I I don't get... There's no story there. It, it was a cool pop. It's a cool moment to to have him do it for one shot, but there's no real substance behind it. And there's, then you have Matt Hardy and Private Party show up at the next Impact taping and win the number one contendership for their tag titles? Yeah. Yeah. Which pretty much fucks all the other teams that are there, which, quite frankly, there aren't many in TNA right now. Yeah, there aren't many tag teams. Well, but, you lost your big one in the North. Yeah. Alex Shelley's not He's, there, so, yeah. you know. That's it. And then the fucking Good Bros. That's it. Oh, they lost on um, the rad- uh, the Rascals. Yeah, they're in NXT. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's just, so, that I, I kind of makes sense, but it kind of is like, well, so, kind of make a Pinder World Champion, no sells everything, and then AEW guys come in here and beat, it's like AEW guys come into Impact and are still beating your talent. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make Impact look good at all. They got to win one at least. Sometimes. Well, I, I think what they're going to do is they're going to have Rich go over Kenny one and one. I think that's what they're building to. It has to be at AEW. Yeah. At oh, absolutely. Division. Absolutely. It has to be in AEW. But I would agree. I, but it won't because they don't know how to fucking tell a proper story. It's AEW. Yeah. So what did you think of the show and as a whole? It was an okay show for a house show. <laughs> the good barely outweighed the bad because the bad was bad. The good was eh, good. So there you go. Tight okay. quality review. Um, what, what do we got left? Royal Rumble. The Rumble. Okay, well, let's 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 do the Rumble. Okay, so this we're taking this the Tuesday after the Rumble. Most of the star ratings are not out yet, so I'm going to use John Kenton's. Sweet! Did you watch the pre-show? Yes! Yes, I did! I did also. Due to the Women's Tag Team Championships, Charlotte Flair and some Asian versus... You get the fuck back here! What? Charlotte because and some Asian. No, because it's going to be the last time we probably say this for a while. The WWE Women's Tag Team Champion and Raw Women's Champion and Asian. World's Asian. Best Asian Asuka. And so, and some Asian versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Match with 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Why did I fucking watch the fucking pre-show? Ken did not have a starting for this because he did not watch the pre-show. Uh, I gave it two. The match was ma. Um, surprising that they furthered the Charlotte Lacey feud because I thought Charlotte was going to win the Rumble. Spoiler, she didn't. And, and I th- thought there was going to be a scary finish for Asuka. But if what's the point of putting the tag titles on them, like you said? Like... What, what's the point? It was a, a complete waste of a have, month and a half. If you're going to have at least you have awesome the tag titles. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
No, it's not fine. What the fuck was this? You couldn't even drop it to another team? Seriously. What is the fucking point of this? Once again, Asuka's involved in a feud featuring two other people. She's on the side once a fucking end. Not even the most important story of the division. I'll get to that back in a minute. Why did I watch the pre-show? Why the fuck did I even bother watching the pre-show? Normally I don't. I just would have been pissed when they did the recap later on in the show. But still, why the fuck did I watch this? Because you're an Oscar mark. I so, didn't know it was going to be the tag titles. Honestly, I thought it was going to be the main show. The main show opens up with the WWE. Oh, wait. Because fuck you. Because fuck you. WWE Championship. Drew McIntyre defends against Goldberg. Technically, bell to bell only went two minutes <laughs> and 32 seconds. Which, by the way, I won. <laughs> That one. Canton gave it two stars. What the fuck? Look, that's what I said. A star per minute? Uh, Would have been two and a half stars if they fucking went over 232. Uh, I gave it a half star. Um, Goldberg nearly dropped Drew on the jet. <laughs> yeah! I, I swear to God, I thought we were having shades of fucking Undertaker again. He so close. He he loses his grip, but he manages to get him around. But holy shit, if he doesn't, he's dropping Drew right on his fucking head. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, um, it was short, thank God. <laughs> uh nice little way to make Drew look strong with the spirits of the barricades. And then coming back and winning. Yeah. So it served his purpose. It definitely served his purpose. But come on, you guys. You can't you can't find a better opponent for Drew McIntyre than Goldberg? Considering the entire storyline was you don't respect the veterans when on a show that Drew said nothing to the veterans but hi and hello and happy to see you, and Orton spent the entire show bitching about them and disrespecting them. What? So, I kinda knew the that- they foreshadowed it because when I didn't, I watched the Go Home Edition of Raw, mm-hmm. but that was like the first Raw I've seen like live in a while. I normally just watch like highlights and stuff. Yeah, and when they were talking about how um, no one's beating Goldberg for the title every because it's the first time he's challenged for the WWE title, and every time he's challenged for a new title, he's won, and and Goldberg. Does the thing McIntyre's respond? I'm like McIntyre's winning. Like, yeah, that's 100 percent McIntyre was winning. Uh, yeah. Okay. SmackDown Women's Champion Sasha. Mm. Some Sasha. <laughs> mm. <sighs> For those of you watching the video podcast, I'm sorry. For those listening on audio, stay sorry. that way. <laughs> uh. Uh, Sasha Banks mm, depends against Carmella. 10 minutes, 25 seconds. Fuck Dame. Or not fuck Dame. Monster, I'm sorry. John Cannon. Well, fuck so John Cannon. <laughs> uh, two and three quarters. I-, I gave it three. I thought it was a good match. I think their TLC match was better. Uh, but again, Sasha gets another good match out of Carmella, which proves why she was the female wrestler of the year. Fucking Bailey Marks. Are you done? Yes. Okay, good. There's an okay match for a house show. Mark. Not an Asian in it, so it sucked. You didn't even hear my my star rating for the fucking tag match. I didn't. It's one star. Because there was an Asian in it. You bumped it up. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to blur that one out. Where are we at? Women's Royal Rumble match. Interesting placement on the card. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so it went 58 minutes, 55 seconds. Since, again, we're doing this two days after, I don't have all the statistics I normally do, but I'll just go through. Um, Bailey was one. Naomi, I'm going through all of them. So be, oh, Jesus. Uh, Bailey was number one. I'm only smile backwards is number two. <laughs> Bianca Belair was number three. Billy Kay was number four. So I liked what they did with Billy Kay <laughs> in this match. Yeah, I thought it was funny. I thought it was entertaining. Yeah. Um, Shotzi Blackheart coming out and shooting the little cannon at her. The Baszler punching her headshot. Tony Storm just ignoring her. And then fucking out, out of all the fucking veterans you can come out and get, you get Jillian fucking Hall <laughs> at number eight. Because it's Jillian Billy, you know? Which was funny. Uh, Ruby Riot at nine. Victoria at ten. Who... Look old in there. Wow. I, she is I, past 40. I know, but she just, she, I don't know. She just didn't it was a like, nostalgia spot. Fuck you. I know. God damn it. I that know. is, that is such bullshit considering yep. the men's rumble. The men's rumble had 13 people over 40 in it. But they didn't, well, Hurricane looks super fat, but I'll get that. <laughs> um, which I was surprised, but I'll get there. Uh, Peyton Royce, the good-looking one, was the good looking. eleven. Okay, yeah. Santana Garrett. So funny story about Santana Garrett. When I saw the name go by, I thought it was Santina because it doesn't show. I? Yeah, because it doesn't so show I? Garrett. So it's like, oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, oh, well, Santana that. Garrett. Okay, cool. okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, Liv Morgan at thirteen, Rhea Ripley at fourteen. Charlotte Flair at 15. Dana Brooke at 16. Tori Wilson at 17. She was looking fine. Lacey Evans at 18. Mickey James at 19. Nikki Cross at 20. Alicia Fox. I was going to write something being like, oh, she's out of rehab. <laughs> at 21. And then they have the. 24-7 title thing. I'm sorry. I Now, I know there are certain members of the wrestling show staff that love the 24-7 title. I like it. I like the gimmick. I like the, the philosophy behind it. I love the fact that it is R-Truth's baby, um, the two-time NWA champion R-Truth's baby, um, and now most winningest professional wrestler in the history of professional wrestling because he's a 50, 50 time plus 24 7 champion i don't know i just want to no yeah absolutely it counts if sure. crash holly's record counts so does our truths fuck you mm -hmm. fuck you, you can fuck no me. fuck you Wait, no it's still that. fuck you so not nah, fuck you that being said it had no reason to be part of this rumble I have a very big problem with the fact that the women's rumbles, it's only in its third year, really. Excuse me. Fourth year? Third year. 18, 19, 20, 20. Fourth year. Um, so it's still relatively new. If this happened in the men's rumble, I'd be more okay with it. Mainly because you can have a little bit more you could have that work. You could have all the wrestlers actually try and pin him while it's happening. But doing it in the women's rumble kind of discredits the women's rumble a little bit more. You know what I mean? Because it took, it completely took all the t uh, time away from the rumble while this all happened. Now, granted, this was all during the time of Alicia Fox's coming down. The 24 7 thing happened. Uh, Alicia gets eliminated. Rolls up, it's done, and it was all in the span of two minutes or something, two and a half minutes, because 90 seconds doesn't mean anything anymore. But it still makes me feel like that there's, it just, it doesn't sit well with me, I guess. I don't know. 
it's just it, it's one of those things where maybe it's just just how I feel about women's how how disrespected women's wrestling is in in, in a general sense. So anything like that, I kind of jump on a little bit more than probably I should. But that's just me. Yeah, because I was actually fine with it, to be honest. Yeah, see, it, and, and maybe that's, it, like I said, maybe that's just because I feel like that they already don't get enough respect as professional athletes and, and great workers. But they, especially during this time in the Rumble where you only had a couple of really high quality talents in there, like four or five. And then you had, you know, you did this with Alicia Fox of all people. So whatever. Because he was rabbit hunting on the pre-show, and now he's fox hunting. Ah, Manny Rose at 22, Dakota Kai at 23, Carmella at 24. Do a nice little spot there with Reginald. Uh, Who is murder- Reginald? I have no clue. A murderer's daughter at number five, or 25. Anal spell backwards at 26. Alexa, mm, Alexa at 27. <laughs> Ember Moon at twenty eight, Nia Jackson. Uh, before 29. before you continue on, let's let's go back and talk about Alexa. That is a great spot. Oh, you know what's funny? There's an Alexa here, and I said Alexa. Oh, geez. and that thing just went off. <laughs> <laughs> hey Alexa, like, buy a dildo. Um, I got the headset. Now. Oh fuck! God damn it! How hey, you like no? Um. The best part about Alexa was her getting pissed and her starting to change and all of them going, no, nope, fuck this, out. That was probably the, the my favorite spot of the entire match. I was sad. Oh, I'm sure, because that was your pick to win. I, th- I thought they were going right for, for her, but... um. <sighs> Sorry, I got you off your numbers. No, we uh, Naomi was Naomi. Uh, Natasha was number thirty. Um, so funny story about that. I started from number five and saying the next one was going to be Natalia for twenty four picks, and then I gave up on twenty nine. Even though she won a match to exactly be number thirty on yep. like Raw or SmackDown. Yep. <laughs> and I had no idea that happened. <laughs> no idea that happened at all. And because I didn't watch enough the pre-show, it probably would have been on the pre-show. It was. But I hadn't heard anything about it. If you want to be a mark, listen to this. Um, what? First of all, let's talk about Bianca Belair winning. Was it surprising to you? Yeah. Because I thought they foreshadowed Alexa all the way. Because <laughs> let's be honest, she was the had the main focus of any woman on any show. So I'm like, yeah. it's probably going to be Alexa. Like, either that or Charlotte. Like, those were my two picks. I didn't think... Because pretty much the build for Bianca Belair was... They came out with a documentary with her on Saturday. Or she beat Bailey on Friday. She had a documentary on Saturday. And then... That was their build. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was their build. Like, well, considering that up till Saturday, last time I looked was Saturday, I think. Uh, the odds on favorite wasn't Charlotte. It wasn't Bianca Belair. It wasn't uh, Bailey. It wasn't anybody. It was Rhea Ripley. She was, she and Ronda Rousey were the two favorites to win the Rumble. I knew Rousey was going to be in it. Yeah. Nobody, no one was, whatever. Um, but it's like, what the fuck? So nobody so, really knew. So I think what, or maybe it was Bianca the whole time. And then they saw that Ripley was the odds on favorite. So they're like, yeah, let's give her the, to the end. But Rhea Ripley was the star of the match. Oh, absolutely. She was. Um, I don't have a problem with Bianca winning, even though I'm not a big fan of her singles wise. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's the right call. I think she will face Sasha. Um, because I still think they're gonna do Charlotte and Asuka. I don't know why. Even I think though, so too. I even I, even though everything in me says Charlotte's facing Lacey at WrestleMania, but they're gonna have three women's matches or four. 
at WrestleMania? Well, they got two nights now, so I guess I guess they could do. Yeah, they could definitely do four women's I matches I guess because you got nights. you've got the women's tag titles, both titles, and then you can have Charlotte yeah. versus Lacey. But I have a feeling they're going to kill off Charlotte versus Lacey before Mania. You think, think they'll she- like cover it at like Elimination Chamber or whatever they're yeah. doing between now and Mania? Yeah, because there's also remember now two shows before Mania now. There's an elimination chamber at Fastlane. Fastlane's like three weeks before Mania. Really? Yeah. They're doing yeah, – they did it last year, but really this year too? Hmm. No, they didn't do it last year. I thought they did it la- – They've done it in years past when WrestleMania – Oh, yeah, when WrestleMania's like late. In, late. Like April 7th or something. Yeah. But they pushed Mania back this year. It was supposed to be like March 28th. Right, and they pushed it forward for – because of the booking of Raymond James? I don't think so. I, I think thought they, did I, it. I, I thought thought they, they were they doing it, it just to try to get more fans there. Oh. Uh, I I was under the impression that they were bringing fans in and a lot of the fans were like first responders and That was for the Super Bowl. Oh, oh. Okay, well that's what it was then. Cuz the Super Bowl is also at Raymond James Stadium this year. Yeah. Home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who was going to win the Super Bowl. They probably are, actually. I mean, they're my team, all right? They've been my team forever. We're going to have two good years under Brady, and then we're going to suck again. Let me have this. Let me just fucking have it, okay? God. Hey, but at anyway. least you were nice enough to say that Brady is partially the reason why you're there. 100% the reason we're there. <laughs> and not partially. It's 100% the reason we're there. You, you hear even some of the Bucks he fans. Played, even though he played, like, shit in the NFC title game. But... If, we, if Brady doesn't show up, we don't get the big stars that come over. We don't get the talent. We're not in the thing. Anyway, I thought the Rumble match was booked weirdly. I wasn't a fan of the women's Rumble match. I know Travis said it was better awesome. than them. Yeah, he said it was better than men's, which I one hundred percent agree. Disagree. Disagree. Yeah, I I don't know. I think it was weird booked booking. I think Shotzi was the first woman eliminated, and it was like ten minutes into the match. It was like weird. It was so crowded. Yeah, and and there wasn't like a many, like besides the Billy K thing and the R Truth thing, there really wasn't much going on until what? the end between like the final four, which kind of saved it from being a no match to a good match. I gave it three stars, but it just I don't know. Plus, no live crowd. I mean. Yeah, and we 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 kind of talked about this on chat, but uh, let's bring this up again here. One of my biggest problems with both Rumbles, and it was more egregious here, but I think it was more problematic in the men's, was yeah. that you got a generic pop when somebody came out, because it was a canned pop. But the problem with that is that the Royal Rumble, as a general rule... Usually, the pops are quite varied, depending on who comes out. And I mean, it's completely random in some cases. You know, huge pops for Alicia Fox. Nothing for Charlotte, you know, because they're established stars. But there's there's that sense of, oh my god, anybody could possibly win this. And because everything was just all canned heat and canned pops and shit, you really didn't feel that, that excitement, that mm-hmm. possibility, the, the, the moment, momentary thing where you can just, just release and become a fan for a, a few moments. I didn't get that at all. And usually I do get that for the Rumble. And I absolutely did not feel that this year. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with that. And I'm kind of glad I didn't have like a little get together like I normally do because especially now, it just wouldn't have felt the same. Yeah. There's always next year. Oh, yeah. Last man standing match for the Universal Championship. Woman wins. Woman wins. Defends against Kevin Owens. Oh, Kenton gave the women's Rumble match three and three quarters. He's an overrating piece of shit. Sorry, John. No, he, you are, John. Uh, The Universal match with, <clears throat> excuse me, 24 minutes, 54 seconds. Ken gave it four and a quarter. I gave it four. 
Um, I thought the match was great with some great spots, but that what everyone's going to remember is the finish. Mm -hmm. It's why I gave it three and a half. You have Owens, and I thought leading up to it, it was fucking great. You had Owens handcuffing Reigns, the ref counting. Reigns takes out the ref at nine. Mm -hmm. So then Paul Heyman comes out of nowhere. Pulling the Jim Cornette Memorial uh, handcuff key around his neck. Right. But why isn't Owens stopping him? Mm Mm-hmm. It's taking too long for him to do it, so another another ref comes down, but doesn't starts count. Counting, and then stops. Right, and then pretty much tells Reigns, "Just at least get to your feet," which negates the previous spot before with him taking out the ref. Right, and then Owens is just standing around like a douchebag. And then when Reigns. Gets finally uncuffed, just gently walks into his fucking guillotine. Yeah. Not just just ge- lets him do it. Yeah. He's like, we gotta go to the finish. Let's fucking do it. Like, it's oh my like God. good two, two and a half minutes of fucking around in this spot. Yeah. It is garbage. It reminds me of the, uh, <sighs> Who was it they faced? It was it was Macho Man versus somebody. I keep wanting to think it's Sid, but it wasn't Sid. Um, and the point was the 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 point of the match is you had to pin your opponent, and then after the op- opponent was pinned, this was WCW, obviously. They had to answer a ten count. No, WrestleMania ten gets crushed. Yes. I thought that was WCW. Nope. God damn it. So he gets well, hung up was... underneath the the scaffold. He tries to tie it off. Can't do it. So he just lets him sit there and that's it. So it doesn't fall down and Crush can easily, you know. Get back up, but he get doesn't. Get back up, but doesn't. And it reminds me of this. So... <laughs> So that all that effort and all that punishment these two guys put them through wasted on that that finish that finish and and the one of the worst parts about this is number one is that if Reigns knew that was going to knock him out why the fuck wasn't he trying it beforehand there were many times he had him in a front face lock throughout the night. All he had to do was cinch it in a little bit more and voila, guillotine. Yep. It negates the match. Mm -hmm. Owens losing for a third time now makes Owens look bad because he got no come up. The Usos help. Yeah, without the Usos help. At least if the Usos came down there and beat the shit out of Owens while Heyman was unlocking him, that would have made more sense. Yes. But Owens just basically takes it like a fucking goober. Mm -hmm. And, And my problem is that we already have a little bit of a depth issue right now. Partially because of coronavirus, partially because they're not making new stars, um, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about that in Men's Rumble more. But you take a look at the Rops, roster depth on both sides. There's nobody that can really touch Roman Reigns, and that's a problem, especially when you've nerfed the only guy that could have potentially beat him three times in a fucking row in three different gimmick matches. Yep. So. I I'm not happy with the booking. The match was good up to that point, but once again, a disappointing finish for for a guy that you know. You know, I'm a fucking Mark. I don't I don't say that lightly. I mean, I'm wearing his fucking T-shirt, but you know, it. The reality is that at what 
what what do you do with Kevin Owens from here? What do you do? You, you got to send him to Raw, right? There's really no other re- because, I, and we'll we'll talk about it later. But the the point is that there's nothing for for Owens to do now. He stepped up to the plate three times and failed. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That finish was just so fucked. All right, and then men's rumble match. Sixty minutes and thirty-two seconds. Canton gave it four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Okay. Number one was Edge. Number two was Randy Orton. We already knew that because they announced it, which I fucking hated. I hate when we know. Who's number 30? Who's number one? I fucking hate it. Yeah, because it takes away from the yeah. surprise yeah. moment that we talked about. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they beat the shit out of each other. Um, Edge. Bash is his knee, right? Bash is Orton's knee. It's like a DDT on the no stable, hits his knee with a chair, and Orton's like, it's like, oh, my knee. So he gets. I can't continue. Cut it off. Sami Zayn's three. Uh, we step out these four. Jeff Hardy's five. Phil Singer's six. Some Asian seven. Yeah, remember, remember that Asian? Yeah, he won one of these, didn't he? Do you remember that? I don't remember that. Me neither. Um, Carlito was number eight, looking jacked as all fucked. Apparently, they don't test for steroids in uh, Puerto Rico. Is <laughs> everyone's nine? Big E, 10. John Morrison, 11. Oh, oh, 12. Go back Go back to Big E and Xavier. Oh, okay. The gear. Oh, my God. It all looked great. All three of them. This was a promo beforehand. They, they showed off the gear that was a tribute to Brody Lee. Fucking phenomenal. Whoever did that, whoever designed it, really well done. Just want to give props to that. And do you know that they are actually auctioning it off and donating it to a Rochester area food? That's great. Thank That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Good to hear. I'll probably put in a bid. I almost certainly won't bid it. <laughs> Make it, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, Morrison 11, Ricochet 12, Elias 13, Damian Priest 14, The Miz 15, Riddle 16, Danielson 17, Oh, we didn't talk about the Bad Bunny concert. Kane, 18. <laughs> not corporate Kane. Yeah, fuck. God damn it. Why does he always have to come back in gimmick form, especially when they were tributing The Undertaker? He comes out in gimmick form when nobody else does. That's Cause he's, the biggest fucking rib. Because he's, cause he's Kane. But he's corporate he's, game now. He's corporate game for like three months. Yeah, it was the best three months of his entire character. Well, him and Danielson hugged it out, and then he choked slam. That was a decent uh, spot, but whatever. That would have been a great nostalgia pop for me. I would love that if there was an actual crowd. Uh. Corbin 19, Otis 20, Dominic Vistino 21. <sighs> He's falling asleep. This is what happened at the Rumble Live for him. Bobby Lashley 22. Um, Hurricane, sorry. Hurricane 23. Looking fat. <laughs> Greg Helms. And now, at 24, would have been the pop of the night. Oh, absolutely would have been. Christian coming out. Yeah. Because that's, without the live crowd, that's... That was nothing. It was yeah. it was the generic pop that you heard the every other night. Which, which is terrible. He deserved so much more than that. Mm-hmm. AJ Styles, 25. Mysterious. Mysterio 26, Seamus 27, Cesaro 28, Seth Rollins coming back at 29, and then Braun Strowman at 30. So Um, outside of Christian, no real big surprises. 
No. No Cena. No Lesnar. There were a ton and a half of rumors of a bunch of people showing up at the Rumble. Like well, there is every year, Cena, like Jay White. Cena. Cena isn't. couldn't. Yeah. Couldn't. Because he was in Canada and he couldn't. And he's filming a TV show or a movie or something until July and he can't leave Canada. Because he'll have to quarantine when he gets in the States. And then had to go and quarantine when he got back into Canada. And they'll just shut down production and. That'd be like a month worth of them not doing anything on the show and it's cost the show a lot of money. So they're just like, eh, that's, he can't do that. I, you know what my problem is with this? How, how does he get to go into Canada and back? He's not. He's in Canada right now. Yeah. But how, how did he get there in the first place? He hadn't spent nine months there. He probably got into Canada. And then quarantine. Before, no, you can't. I don't know what you to cannot do. do that. That's the thing. Is Trudeau, at least the last I, I am aware of, is that unless you have family here or up in Canada or specifically a significant other up in Canada, you cannot cross the border. Well, so what the fuck? He's filming a TV show. Money talks, but I guess I'm filming a TV show next weekend. See ya. Goodbye. Whatever. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of surprises that didn't happen. So, um, like every year, uh, not like every year because every year's got one big one. And, and technically this one had the one semi big one in Christian. There's nobody knew Christian was coming back. And apparently he's been completely cleared for a while. So mm -hmm. cool. Love to see more of him. But let's talk about the winner. So, Orn comes back out of nowhere after Edge eliminates somebody. Uh, Rollins. Rollins, yeah. And <clears throat> hits an RKO, goes to toss Edge out, and we're all like, yep, you're like Orn's winning. And then goes to toss Edge out, and Edge reverses it, toss Orton out. So Edge wins the Rumble at the number one spot. Only the third person to ever done that? Yep. Michaels and Austin. Nope. No. Ray. Nope. No, he was, he was number three, wasn't he? He was two. Flair was three. Flair was three. Who else was the other number one one? Benoit. Oh, yeah. The, we don't talk about Benoit around here. You know this. No, they don't talk about Benoit. <laughs> so this is what I found another thing funny. Was that when Sami Zayn entered at number three, he got this conspiracy theorist gimmick, and they're all like, oh, number three, the, 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 the number that statistically doesn't last the longest in the Rumble. When literally, Bianca Belair showed up at number three. And won it. And won. Yeah. And number three has a record of people winning from there. Flair being one of them. Well, now, yeah. Now so it's, it's like two. Yeah. But I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought this flowed better than the women's match. Um, the Orton angle was predictable with him coming back. Edge winning. Even though I think Chip called it. Yeah, but Chip a, did call it. But he's a mark. Hey, I think I called him sometimes the fucking mark wins. Um, Sometimes the most obvious play is the play they go with. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I thought that was a surprise. And I didn't explain it to you, but I thought he's going to face McIntyre, and all the rooms were saying it's. And you thought it was Reigns, and all the rooms were saying it's Reigns. I thought it was McIntyre be, because when Edge was out with an injury, he wants a he wanted a WrestleMania match with McIntyre. Okay, that's what he said. So I'm like, oh, he's going to face Mac like this lines up perfectly now. He's going to face McIntyre. But then, yeah, 
the death problem you said, like what faces are there on SmackDown? And I thought about it. I'm like, what fa- faces are there on SmackDown? Exactly. <laughs> there is nobody so, there. So it makes sense for Edge to challenge Reigns. Whereas Drew has quite a few people he could pick from if he wanted to put somebody over his heel. Mm-hmm. So. Like Cesaro, for instance. Or what's probably going to be Sheamus. Which isn't a bad... To be fair, that's not a bad pick. But... I it, think... It's, it's a TV I program. <laughs> I think Seamus would be the way to go because weren't they teasing like them to be like together or something? Yeah, Seamus turned on him on, on Monday. Oh, did they? Yeah, did he? They are. Seamus already turned on him last night. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch Raw. Yeah, that's already happened. They, they Edge teased a potential match with Drew and. And then he's going to SmackDown. NXT. Yeah, yeah he's gonna he's gonna tease the match with Cole. <laughs> Uh, Balor? Oh, yeah, that's right. Balor's champion now. Jesus Christ. <sighs> okay, Key. I hate this. Uh, so, before we go, uh, one last, uh... Oh, um... It was a good show, but I... I think the Rumble matches were too bunched together. I think you should open one and close with one, or have one as a second match and close, but... You had a rumble match, a match, and then a rumble match. I think it was too much rumble-ish. Rumbles. Exactly. Yeah, it was almost back-to-back. and um, There was no way to cool down either, even though the Owens finish did a good job of it. <laughs> yeah. A um, couple newsworthy things. WWE has signed their third billion-dollar rights deal. While moving the WWE Network to the to NBC's Peacock app in March. Oh yeah, we haven't talked news and rumors at all. No, so I'm just trying to remember the big things. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> there's that. Um, and I love all these articles. Like I read an article when I was taken in New Jersey earlier, saying how WWE, why WWE is failing right now, and I'm like, they have three. Billion dollar TV contracts, separate TV contracts for a billion dollars each. Making the most money they ever have. How are they failing well, right now? Not only making the most money they've ever made, but their expenses are so low because they're not touring. They yeah. don't have to worry about ticket. Their profits higher. Oh my God. You know, like what the fuck are you doing? Even if you go with by gross revenue, it's still higher than normal. And then you take into the fact that all these expenses aren't actually happening. They're not bringing in the biggest stars. They're not, they're not paying a shit ton of money for Lesnar or The Rock or Cena or any of those because they don't really need to right now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how, how does anyone think that's a failing company? Are you out of your fucking mind? Well, ratings, bro. Ratings are low. Ratings, bro. That's why. Ratings, bro. Yeah, because they're failing against AEW's 900,000 on Wednesday night, right? So, AEW draws between, yeah, like 900,000. NXT does like 650. No, it's higher than that. It's like eight. Oh, the last time... When I saw fucking Alvarez, he blocked me because I fucking knocked <laughs> him out. Well, the last thing I saw from Alvarez was it was 650. But even so, still more people watch NXT from Wednesday night and on the network than people watch AEW. They're not losing the war. War. Quote, here, war. Here, here's the thing. And I'm going to, I'm going to, they're not beating Raw. They're not beating SmackDown. Well, that, that's, that's my exact point. And, and I'm beating WWE's developmental territory, but they're not even beating them. Exactly. And, and this, this came right from, of all people. And I don't know why this week I chose to listen to Eric, Eric Bischoff, but yep. yeah, it's, it's like you're not even beating a flagship show with your flagship stars. Yeah. So. So even if they truly are beating NXT, so what? 
so what? They're not being raw. They're not being SmackDown. Their pay per views aren't drawing as good as WWE's because they got the network. Mm-hmm. And now it doesn't fucking matter because mm-hmm. they're making two hundred million dollars a year for the rights fees for WWE Network. They're making on average. 16, was it 16 mil a year or 16 mil a quarter? 16 mil a year, right? I think it was a year. For what? WWE Network now. Oh, yeah. They're, they're making 16 million a year because they have average of 1. million. No, it's more yeah. than that. It, 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 it's more than that only because it's the gross revenues higher. But they have a lot of costs behind it, so I I want to say it's more like, oh, well, it could be sixteen million a quarter. That makes that makes more sense. Thirty two million, so sixty four million, okay, sixty four million a year. Still, yeah, they're still making over three times the amount of money just for the rights fees. Even if they were making only half that, a hundred million. Even if they were making the same amount of money that they're making now. The peace of mind of saying, you're dealing with the shit. If your app goes down, they're going to yell at you, not us. If uh, you try and change anything in terms of your channel or the UI or anything, that's on you. Ha- being able to say that, so much better. And now they only have to wor- worry about the frankly speaking, a lot smaller market, but the worldwide market that still uses WWE and Outwork. You're looking at um, maybe 300,000 people that subscribe outside of the U.S. Mm-hmm. So the server balancing of that and the... the I uh, think the servers are going to be the same. I think they're just going to put it behind like an NBC. I think they're just pretty much moving their app to the Peacock app. I th- I'm, they'll probably change it up a little bit. From from a back end perspective, that wouldn't work. Oh, okay, see, I don't know the technology. Um, so well, basically, I, yeah, ahead. basically, what would happen is that they would just take the the raw video content and move it to the servers that are hosting the back end of Peacock, and then the front end, the the actual app that you actually go in there, will query those those actual video programs that's that's how that that setup works that being said go ahead you go ahead well i was gonna say i i told you this i recently yesterday actually just got the peacock app and i was streaming superstore on my playstation had a buffer like four or five times i'm hardwired in Move to my computer. Also hardwired in. Laggy. Didn't need a buffer, but it was kind of like laggy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the Roku in the bedroom, not hardwired in through Wi Fi, perfectly fine. <laughs> it's no buffering, over- no lag, perfectly fine. Ran smooth yeah. as hell. And that's the thing is that. So they got to try to clear up some of these issues. It's still a relatively new app. Yeah, but that's, that's another thing too. They're they're the revenue on the back end of that, especially when the deal is basically, hey, we're going to just port all these customers that are already on the WWE app into Peacock. One point six million. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. Immediate shove up, you know, it's especially when uh, NBC can go to ad ad uh, advertisers and say, "We got automatically 1.6 million new subscribers on our ad supported part because they pushed them over to the 4.99 plan. They did not push them over to the 9.99 ad free plan." So if I you, the, I got the 9.99 ad free. Well, most people will probably upgrade to that, but. The four ninety nine plan still has ads in it, and if you're a marketer for for NBC, 
don't you think they have that in their f- back fucking pocket when they go to fucking Charmin and say, hey, we just got 1.6 million new subscribers on our ad ad supported tier. Do you want to get your your ass covering on that gravy and train? You know that WWE is going to get at least a cut of that too. It's, these are just they right don't even have to. They no. They, they're they're I I guarantee you that actually that doesn't happen because they're making so much money off the direct licensing of it that they don't even need to worry about that. I understand. I you're probably right, but I still think hey, you know. We're bringing this. You're giving us these rights fees, but also it's kind of like with USA. You're giving these rights fees, but they still get ad revenue too. So I, I'm just because you're giving me two hundred million a year doesn't mean I don't want a little bit of that ad revenue also because it's our program. So there's probably some more working out things, and also. There's speculation on Fuck Day Mouse's part that I guess when you watch live TV on Peacock, which I haven't even done, that there's no um, watch from beginning. You have to either watch it live or watch it when it's over or once That'll it's suck. done. I that's I I don't know if that's true though because like. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'll have to look more. All I do is try to watch something live, but I haven't even watched, try to watch something live. Most but. other apps don't have that have live uh, capabilities like that have the option of restarting it from the beginning. That would be kind of strange for Peacock not right. to have that. Right. But again, you said it's a relatively new app and I think yeah. most of the streaming stuff is sports anyway. And when you watch sports, you'll watch it live. You, you never really watch it like the Super Bowl Sunday. Like I'll be watching it live. I mean, if my Bucks win, I'm going to watch the game eventually again. But like when you're watching shit live, sports live, you're not going to watch it the next day. Yeah, it's not a rewatchable thing. It's something you have to watch live. Yeah. So maybe he's talking about the sports aspect of it, but I'm pretty sure WWE is going to go, hey. We gotta do the watch from beginning thing because that's on our app. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty sure they'll do that. I'm pretty sure too. Well, that's a big gift for WWE. Um, man, that's ooh, it's a lot of money. I love it. I I do love it because that means professional wrestling still alive and well. Mm-hmm. And uh, they gave us the location of the next two WrestleManias. Technically three. Because we weren't 100% sure that it was going to be in Tampa Bay. Well, yeah. So, Tampa this year, obviously. With Next, fans. With fans. Next year, back in Dallas. Which surprised me, because I thought they'd go to L.A. But the year after that, in 2023, they're LA. going to L.A. And he said something about going to Dallas. And I was like... I'd rather go to L.A. I've already been to Dallas. But, but I but, haven't. I haven't been to Dallas. There's in and out there. There's also in and out in L.A., so whatever. But also, and Chip was like, I'm down, and we could go to Chip's favorite restaurant. Waffle House! Waffle House! Yes, we must, we must have every meal at Waffle House. Uh, I don't know about that. But you, you little bitch! Waffle House! You eat enough Waffle Houses late to get you through an entire 12 months. Yeah. Which is Once probably one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, I I think those were the big news items. There's probably some smaller ones, but I'm not going to even look them up. Yeah. I mean, that's the main stuff right now. We'll, we'll do a more in-depth of news and rumors on our next show. But I do want to say... I still think we got to cover two fucking shows next show. Yeah. Take over and fucking AEW. Yeah. Well, at least it's not technically... No, no. No, AEW's in March. Yeah, because they moved it. Just take over. Okay, so we'll do news and rumors and rumors and news. Okay. Maybe we'll even do a watch-along sometime 
in the next three months. We definitely got to do one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, there's there's a lot of um a lot of things we got to get going. You know, obviously we're getting closer than ever to the end of this fucking pandemic. So I can see us starting to really get into shows again and going out to actually see wrestling and huh? actually, yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm hoping the way things are going, our first wrestling show will probably be two CW. <laughs> so June, right? yeah, it's June. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot to look forward to finally. Then, you know, in, in this life, it's just been, you know, we're coming up on a year since the real lockdown started. So people yeah. are still really getting crazy about it. Um, so a couple of quick things. Usually the, the whole cleanup gimmick here. Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, at Sleazy Fat Man. Fat Man's at TWS Fat Man. I'm at TWS Sleazy. Um, big thing though, and this is going to come out before the, the closing, I hope. Depends on how quickly I can get this done. Um, but the deadline for this is, uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. We actually got nominated for a Thezzy for best okay. wrestling news media. How the fuck did that happen? Uh, me being the Hall of Famer at Pull Some Strings. And quite frankly, we're the best anyway. So I, I definitely agree with you on the second part. First part, I'm not so sure. Huh? Um, but not that you're not the Hall of Famer, just that you have any strings to pull. Um, huh? but seriously though, <laughs> seriously though, go to our social medias. You'll find the link there. All you have to do is click, put your email in, um, put in whether or not you want to get emailed by them. You don't have to. And the only thing you have to do is go on the second page, list us as number one as best wrestling news media. It really important to us this year. This is the year we could actually legitimately win this. Um, the, the winners from the last few years were mm, up rocks, which doesn't exist anymore for reasons we all know, but we don't want to talk about. So there is a huge race to potentially win this award. And we need your support so badly here. Um, if we win this, I will absolutely go absolutely aim shit. I'll do something absolutely crazy. I don't know what. We'll You'll figure it eat out. Eat healthy food. I may eat a broccoli. Is that maybe how you say it? In a, cheese. a broccoli thing? Or maybe it, covered in like a shit ton of cheese, but I'll eat one. I'll eat I will one. I will eat a salad live on air without any lettuce. Dressing. <laughs> I mean, I, we will figure out something crazy we'll do. But if we win this, it would mean the absolute legitimately to the world to us. Um, we've been doing this for so, so long, and we really, really need your support on this. Uh, so go to, uh, it's Mighty God King, um, but the, the link to the actual post and how to get to the, uh, uh, ballots is right in our social media. It's pinned at the top. Please, please, please vote for us. Um, anything else? No. Okay. So gearnetwork.com, wrestlingshow.com, go there. Um, but, other than that, that's it for the show. So for Sleazy. For the fat man. I caught him right in the middle of the yawn. It's great. This is the wrestling show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace.
The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.